beautiful people, welcome back. I hope everyone is having a beautiful day today. And in today's video, obviously, we are gonna be testing out the newest uh, launch from Huda. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Full Coverage Liquid Foundation. I have it in the shade 140G. And I thought for today's video, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to wear test this and really give you guys all the info. Because, well, first of all, if you're new here, hello, okay? I love to do foundation tests. Like, foundation reviews are my thing. I love them so much. I love to test out every formula, every type, every texture. I just, I feel like there's something so special about discovering foundations and, and getting to learn about their structure and how they work and what they're good for and just all that kind of stuff, right? So I was trying to think for this one, like how could we test it in more of a fun way, do something different? And then it occurred to me, I have to go to Walmart. Okay, I've got some errands I have to go do for some reels that I'm doing over on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's linked down below. Make sure you check it out. I'm working on a ton of not only makeup content, but also plus size fashion reels, OOTDs. And I'm actually going to Walmart to get some jeans for a Will It Fit series that you guys asked me about because you wanted to know how the sizing ran on one of their new jeans. It's like the true and tribe and true or true true and something. I don't know. But anyways, moral of my story is I got to go to Walmart. I have to go do some errands. And I thought that this would be kind of a perfect way to incorporate not only the foundation and, you know, the wear test, the transfer and all the different claims, because this foundation, obviously we're going to get into it, read it from the website, but there are a ton of claims surrounding this foundation, water, wear, transfer, all of the stuff like that. Anyways, with all of that information that you may or may not have needed, guys, if I don't shut myself off and just like keep moving, I will never, I will just sit here and spin on my little hamster wheel of thoughts for like an hour and a half. Um, so I did go ahead uh, just while I was off of camera. I threw on some of the Tatcha liquid silk canvas. This is just like my basic primer. Anytime I'm going in with a new foundation, anything complexion based that I'm not sure of or that I've never tested, I like to keep it nice and neutral with this one. Um, and then while that's settling into the skin, I thought we could go through the website, the Huda Beauty website and read some claims on this foundation because basically, and I'm just going to give you guys kind of a recap of it because I know at this point everyone has talked about it. But basically what you need to know about it is that this is actually a foundation that was created to be a revamp of her original faux filter foundation because you guys, that foundation, I'll tell you right now, okay, as somebody who is combo leaning oily or even back when I was super, super oily, I hated that foundation. It was way too thick and cakey and intense and the fragrance was too much and it was just, uh, like everything about that foundation was awful. I mean, don't get me wrong. It did have beautiful coverage, but like everything else I couldn't stand. But going into this one, I did think it was really cool that Huda wanted to like address all of that, handle it and um, kind of come out with something that would be like a better revamped version. But anyways, let's go ahead um, and get into this website again. I'm not going to go through all of the abridged information, but it says here that this is the same full coverage and long-lasting properties that you know from the original formula, but now it has a 24-hour flexible wear, a luminous matte finish, and it's fragrance-free. Again, thank the Lord. Jesus up above, okay, because we need that fragrance-free life. And something else that I thought was interesting with this um, is that it says on here that the true filter effect gives instant coverage so seamless that it immediately unifies skin tone and texture as it blurs skin to give a radiant finish. Like there's, there are a lot of claims mixed up in there. You're telling me you're going to blur. You're going to smooth. You're going to just make everything all kinds of covered. And don't get me wrong. I am here for it. Okay. Can you see I'm having a little bit of a breakout situation? Hello. So don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm obviously all for this, but I'm just kind of like, mm, like, is, is it too good to be true? I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, non kicky formula is life proof, meaning waterproof, super long wear up to 24 hours, transfer proof, fade proof, sweat proof, humidity proof. No matter what the weather occasion or situation, the faux filter luminous matte will never let you down. Oh, okay, honey. I am really hoping that you are right. All right. So let's get into it. Packaging is exactly the same. You have the uh, same square component. I actually think this is a beautiful container. I love Love the fact that it comes with a pump. And again, I have this in the shade Cashew 140G. And also too with this, fun fact, you get 1.18 fluid ounces of product. And I'm a big fan of that because standard um, foundations are typically one fluid ounce, like right on the money. So you actually get 18% more product, which is kind of nice. I just went ahead and pumped out, I would say about a pump, maybe a pump and a quarter onto the sponge. And I'm gonna get to applying it here. Hmm. So just what I can tell you so far, just in only doing that section, um, I do think that the coverage is nice. I don't think with a sponge that it's like super intense full coverage because, I mean, you can still see my redness and all of this perfectly fine. Um, so I don't know if it's like a sponge application. I'm assuming that that's what it is. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change out for a brush, which, I, hello, I just had. Guys, why do I do this? I set down my brushes and then I'm blind as a bat without my glasses and then I can't find anything. Hello. All right. So I found one. It's not the one that I wanted, but you know what? We're going to make it work. I was looking for my um, Laura Lee Los Angeles. It's like her L11, her foundation brush. You guys, I'll have her brushes linked down below. If you have not tried them, they are so freaking fantastic. But anyways, I'm going to go in with this one. Same amount of product, and I'm going to do it on this side. 
um, just to see. Oh yeah, the coverage looks way better with a brush. Like I feel not only more covered, but I feel like it's pressing in better and it's giving me a little bit more of that natural um, skin light kind of coverage versus this side where I felt like it was a little bit more like clumped together, a little bit more cakey. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just go ahead and try to marry all sections of my face with a little bit more product to see if I can uh, build it up on this side a little bit where I had originally used the sponge and just get everything kind of worked in and covered. One thing that I am noticing with this, just like the, the feel of the foundation, um, is that it does dry down very, very quickly. So be mindful, like while you're working with this, it might actually be better to work in sections. And something else too, um, I don't think that this is the kind of foundation that you're gonna want to um, really like build up. Because what I'm noticing, like especially along my jawline right here, is that it's almost getting like thicker and cakier and less malleable. And so the cakiness or the thickness of the foundation itself is actually building up as I go and just looking very thick and aggressive like right in this area which I'm definitely not loving. So at this point I am going to go ahead and move on to concealer. I'm just using the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer in the shade Fair. All right you guys so obviously I zoomed the camera in super far because I really want you to see um, how this foundation is sitting. I do not like it so far. It just feels so heavy especially like right along here. And right over here too like it's just so thick and so cakey and so dense feeling at this point I mean as far as basic application goes there's really nothing that I would do differently and you can see it too like around my mouth right here it's just super settling and like, oh my God, and my forehead looks atrocious. All right, you guys, so I've been sitting here off of camera and it just hit me. This foundation, as far as the look and like the, the overall feeling that I'm getting that I'm, I'm just not loving, it's reminding me a lot of when I tested the Born This Way Matte Foundation from Too Faced. And if you don't remember this, I'm gonna link my first impression right here because this foundation gave me a run for my money. And to kind of save you guys the abridged version here, what I ended up having to do with this, because I did a basic application just like I did right here, and it it looked absolutely horrible. Like the, the overall application, it was thick, it was cakey, it wouldn't blend, and I was having so many issues. So with this one, what I ended up doing and what works the best for me with that foundation is actually doing um, the steps in reverse. So I like to go in and do my concealer in like a, lo a little along the jawline, the under eyes, forehead, you know, the normal places that I put them to shape out the face. And then I like to go in from there and piece in with the foundation because I find that it gives me a less cakey look and everything just blends a little bit nicer. So I think as much as it pains me to say that, I am going to do the the exact same thing with this foundation. <sighs> my God, my poor skin. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this off and then I'll be back and we'll kind of run through the, again, the steps in reverse concealer first, then foundation, and we will go from there and see if it makes a difference. All right, guys, I am back. I went ahead, obviously reprimed with the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. And now, I, like I said before, I'm gonna go in in the reverse order and under the eyes, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of my Becca under eye corrector. This is in the shade light. And by the way, if I didn't say this um, already, everything that I'm using today, I will have linked down below. So if you're curious about any of it, feel free to check it out. From there, I'm gonna go in just like I did before with the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer. I'm gonna blend that out with my sponge again um, on a little clean section so we're not having any transfer of the foundation. And I'm using this just like I would uh, with that Too Faced foundation where basically the concealer is mapping out the areas where I'm not going to need a ton of foundation, like along the jawline, stuff like this, where I'm already going in with the concealer. Essentially, all this is doing is giving me coverage in the areas where I'm going to be putting it anyways. And with the Too Faced one, it really helped make a difference um, in terms of the spreadability, because what I found was that having the concealer down first not only eliminated the need for excess coverage or excess foundation in this case, uh, but it also really helped because then I don't have to try to go back over the foundation, which doesn't really want to blend. Um, and you know, blend a concealer over top of it because the concealer is already there. So it just, it helps a lot, I think, when you're working with a, a more stubborn foundation and it's something that um, has been really helpful to me. So I'm gonna just leave, I, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave the concealer there for now and go in next up with the foundation. I'm just gonna take it on the same brush here and go in with just a little bit, like not even a full pump. And I'm gonna work this, like I said before, in sections, starting off right here. And I'm really just focusing on pressing it right in this main area where there wasn't anything and then lightly blending the excess or anything left on the brush over top of like down to the concealer that way everything blends but it's not like a dragging kind of blend motion it's more of a light little stipple all right so right here is um about where we should be with the foundation everything you know blended out where it is i really really like um the look of it this way i think that it has a lot
lot more of a natural matte finish, which I appreciate. Like, there's a lot more movement on my cheek. It doesn't look as thick or cakey as it did before. And just overall, I think that the, um, the shaping of the face went a lot better when mixing it with the concealer. So from here, I'm just gonna run through my rest of my products like I normally would, starting off with some setting of the under eyes and the T-zone with the one size setting powder from Patrick Star. For the rest of the face, you guys, I just spent the last 10 minutes, okay, 10 minutes looking for my freaking setting powder. There are two of them that I have been using lately. The It Cosmetics one, that pressed foundation illumination powder, and the new one from Fenty, their new Pro Matte. And neither of them are right here. I have no freaking clue where they went. So I am actually resorting back to an old one here, an oldie but a goodie. This is the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use in the shade Cloud. You can tell that it has been very loved. And I am just going to very, very lightly use this to set my face. I definitely don't need a ton because the foundation itself is settling down pretty nicely. Because I do have um, combo leaning oily skin, I have to set everything down. And I like to use something that has a little bit of coverage with it to do that. So at this point, with everything set down, I actually think the foundation now, now that again, we reworked it, we've set everything, um, I think it's looking really good. I don't have any glaring issues so far. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit of thickness like right around my nose, but that's pretty standard for me. So for the most part, I think things are looking good. And from here, I'm just gonna run through a couple of my other products, bronzer, blush, highlight, brows, the works. Right now, I am going in with the uh, Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Bronzer in Medium. As you can tell, y'all, this one is so, so damn loved. I'm freaking obsessed with this bronzer. Then next up, I'm just going in with my Melt Cosmetics Blush Kill, <laughs> Blush Kill, Buzz Kill Blush, because um, I freaking love this. I've talked about it a billion times. Y'all, you wanna see a blush that I have just killed. Look at this thing. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. The shade, the luminosity it gives. Also, when I'm this close to the camera, y'all can't even see the colors, I feel like. The sun, hold on, it's messing up my world. Now, next up, we're just going in with the It Cosmetic Setting Spray, giving it a nice little dose before some highlight. Which for that, I'm actually gonna pull out this oldie but a goodie here. This is the Dior Backstage Original uh, Highlight Palette. And I'm gonna run together these top two shades right here and highlight the face. Y'all, this is one of my all time, my God, this, this sun is pissing me off. Okay, so I think that this is a lot better. Hello, so back to what I was saying, this highlighter is so, so gorgeous. I, this has been one of my favorites for like literally years. All right, so now it's time for some brows because look at our highlight. Mm, so good. Uh, so for brows, I'm gonna use the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil here and just get this nice and spooly through. Also giving me these nice fluffy ass brows here. We got the Benefit, oh my God, one brow with, one brow without. This stuff makes such a huge difference. This is the Benefit Gimme Brow Gel in 3.5. And then just for a little bit of color here, I'm taking the bronzer that I use from Charlotte Tilbury and running that through the crease. Just for a little shine on the lid, I'm gonna take the deepest shade out of the highlight palette that I used and pop that all over again, just for that nice little Oof, basic shine, that's super pretty. And then for one last spray all over the face here, I'm gonna take the Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. And you know, just for a little extra smoothness here, I'm gonna take my Halo Glow Setting Powder and I am just going to lightly buff some of that over the cheek just to help smooth it out a little. And then for mascara, I'm actually gonna be testing out this one from CoverGirl. I've obviously never tried it before. This is the, uh oh, I just lost the top. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Volume Mascara. I wanted to test this one out because um, I used to be obsessed with the, oh, I like these bristles. Um, I used to be obsessed with the original one, the Orange Lash Blast. And so I thought for today, I would you know give this one a go. I picked it up at Walgreens maybe, no. Walgreens, Ulta, somewhere. I'll, I'll obviously have it linked down below, but it just really intrigued me. And for lips, I just went ahead and lip lined with a little bit of my Essence 8 Hour Stay Waterproof Lip Liner in Because Duh. And I'm not gonna do anything crazy with the lips because I am gonna be wearing a mask. And then over top of that, I'm just taking a little bit of the Patrick Ta lipstick. This is in the shade Oshi oh, Single. Now, with the lipstick on, we are officially done. This is the full face, and I wanna put up the up close that way you guys can see the texture, because I definitely think uh, there's been a huge improvement from when I first applied it to now. You know, adding in all the setting sprays and the powders and stuff like that, it really did help to refine and press this foundation into the skin. And so far, like just with the way it looks right now, I have no issues. I think it looks beautiful, and it does have a nice kind of lightly lifted matte feel, like the, the over all sheen that I'm getting because it is supposed to be more of like a luminous type foundation, a luminous matte is how it's specced. And I can see where they're coming with that because I think like down in this area especially, normally when I use a matte foundation, it tends to look a little bit thicker, a little bit more um, like non-light reflecting. Like my, my face just looks very flat in this area when I use matte foundations. And I like that with this one, it doesn't have that. It has like a little bit of lilt to it, a little bit of movement, which is really, really pretty. I think for me, something that I'm the most curious about with this foundation is 
is the fact that because I had to go in and use it kind of separate, like using the concealer before the foundation, I'm really interested to see how well it's going to uh, be for like transfer resistance right through here because I did have to go on and blend the uh, blend the concealer first and then this to make everything obviously blend out together. Um, so I'm really curious now to see like is that still going to affect it? Am I going to see you know like a ton of transfer through here because that's concealer or is it still going to hold up really well because this whole area right here is foundation like all the way down um, in this area I lightly pulled it up into here and even up um, on like the jawline and stuff like that. So I think there's definitely going to be like some room for error on my part because again I had to use concealer first. But overall I'm obviously super curious number one and number two I'm also running very late because I was supposed to be done like 40 minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll meet you guys wherever we go next the car Walmart wherever let's just get there. All right you guys so we just got to Walmart mom's holding the phone mom say hi. Hello. Hello. Um, but I wanted to show you guys real quick before we go in that this mask, there is nothing on it. It's never been worn full on white on the inside. The other side is yellow. So if you see some kind of weird ass cast, that's what it's from. But going into this, I do think the main thing that's going to happen is probably my lipstick will transfer. And then my uh, like up and around this area, maybe over here, there will be transfer as well. Really quickly, before we go inside, I just want to do a little bit of a touch test like this. I'm not like agitating it, but I just want to see if it's going to come off at all. I just have to scope it Starby out. Starby Bucks. <laughs> Mama went and got a Starby Bucks and she's very excited. <laughs> so excited. Can you tell? All right. Oh, so, I love that you sing about it. Starby Bucks. That's, that must be genetic. And so looking at this, there is definitely a little transfer from my lipstick and it looks like some on the nose. Mm, but overall, nothing too shabby. Okay. I just right. But did you put highlight or anything on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have highlight, blush, because bronzer, the whole bit. Which in this light, by the way, I look so awful. Lighting is just really bad. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead here. Let's pop her back on. Ow. And let's go inside. Do a little shabopping. Shabopping. Shabanging. Let's just take a moment to reflect. Oh. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh, there we go. Hold on. Are you ready for the cutest mom in the, <laughs> in the whole world? Look at that face. You ready? Oh, my dear God. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we're back in the car, and uh, I obviously haven't taken my mask off yet. We were just in there for probably an hour and a half-ish. I had to spend a fair amount of time at the customer service desk, but let's go ahead and get this all situated. Whew, all right. Oh, boy. Hold on. All right, so let's assess. There's definitely a ton of transfer in here, but we have to be fair because I know, like I watched in Huda's video, um, even when she did her mask test, like your bronzer and your blush and stuff like that can still wear off, but your foundation doesn't necessarily come off. So let's just take a look. Obviously we've got lipstick, bronzer. That looks so nasty, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. I'm gonna grab this from you, mom. And Sorry. let's take a little look-see. That's my mother singing. The angels are singing Starbucks. My mother got her Starbucks still. All right, so let's take a little look. Definitely seeing some lines right here. And oh yeah, oh, she's, it's patchy, isn't it? It looks kind of patchy. Hold on. Those were my coupons to the Burger King. <laughs> Not gonna lie, guys, I keep them right up on my visor. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm gonna take a look. Oh yeah, there's like, you see this there's like a line right here there's like full-on chunks of it oh yeah right Wait, here do you see the lines yeah actually line we... line 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 and you know what i mean yeah we, we are going to hold it to a slightly different standard because it does say transfer resistant and all of that but again i think it did pretty well all things considered and um I'm not mad at it. I think, I don't know how I'm feeling. Maybe it's just this lighting. I think that on my skin, it's actually pulling kind of like almost overly chalky matte. Mom, how do you think that this looks on my face? Do you like this, this foundation? Or is it just, am I like having a moment maybe? I can't tell. Cause I feel like it looks good. Like I don't have any issues with it, but it just looks dry kind of, or like it looks very matty. matty. Is that, that's my, my mom's way of saying it looks overly matte. Okay. She always tells me, Paige, you look overly matty today, but I just, I don't know. I, I think for me, it's not even an issue really with the transfer. It's that I don't know if I love the way that it's settling into my skin and I might be able to like, you know, prep differently, like maybe use a more hydrating primer or something like that. I'm actually kind of surprised that the area around my mouth, like right here, I'm, I'm shocked that didn't tear up more than it um 
is right now. That's kind of shocking because normally when I wear like a lipstick under a mask, it tends to want to just like go all over the place. And I'm kind of shocked though. That's not too bad. And even the nose for me having mainly like the Wet n Wild concealer up here, that didn't do too bad either. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you do not follow me on Instagram, I know I've already said this once, but y'all, I just hit the jackpot in there because um, I'm going to be doing some reels like try on stuff for Walmart finds. And because you guys wanted me to test like the joggers and the jeans and stuff like that. And I am shook. I found some of the cutest shit in there and it was so cheap, like $5, $4, $5. <gasps> so excited. So, you know, make sure you check that out if you haven't. But I'm going to go ahead and we are going to run and go get a Diet Coke with light eyes. Bitch, I need one. And uh, we will go from there. So hang tight and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Right, mom? Say bye, mama. All right, you guys, so I know this isn't exactly what you were expecting, but this is officially the next day, and I do have a close-up after about nine hours of wear from the uh, clip you were just watching, so hang tight for that. I'll put it up here in a second, but I wanted to swing on here and try one more application with this foundation because I believe the last time, you, or the last clip that you guys saw, I was actually in on my phone uh, in the Walmart parking lot, and I was talking about how after I had been wearing this foundation for, I think, maybe four-ish, maybe four or five-ish hours, um, I noticed that it was looking really like dry and matty over this area of my face and I just wanted to take one more crack at it to see if I could correct that and also I will go ahead and I'll throw up the up close here actually um, because you can see in the up close that that dry kind of matty cakey look it never really went away like I definitely um, I feel like throughout the day it maybe settled in a little bit to the t-zone because that's where my natural oils came through but like over the cheek area around my mouth it got very settled and just really um, really mattified on my skin and so I wanted to take just again one more little look at it today, see if I could make it work, and play around a little bit with the primer as well as the powders, like maybe there was something there we can adjust. Because I was thinking along the same lines, like how I was talking in the previous video about the Too Faced Born This Way matte, and I definitely think going in this direction helped a lot, but then I also got to thinking after it looked super matte, sorry if you can hear the tractor by the way, um, <laughs> it's really early here, but um, I was thinking about that and how I ended up having to play around with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation, and you know, once I figured out a good way to wear it, it worked really, really well for me. So I figured I would kind of take the benefit of both of those foundations, put them together for this one, and just see if, you know, maybe one more try, maybe we can make it work and uh, go from there. So I'm going to go ahead, actually, and get started here. So I'm going to grab the NYX Marshmallow Primer, and this I'm going to take primarily, like, through the T-zone right here, just as more of a smoothing primer. And then over the perimeter of the face, I'm going to take a little bit of the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum, and I'm not going to go in with a ton of this. I want it to just be something that gives me, you know, a little bit maybe of prolonged hydration. I'm only taking like one little pad of it and really working it in to this area. Now I am going to keep application the same as I did yesterday, going in first here with my concealer, just using the Wet n Wild um, Incognito Concealer. I'm going to map this out just like I did in yesterday's portion here, keeping it, you know, pretty much the same basic. And then if I need more coverage in these areas, of course, I can touch up later. But for right now, I'm just going to take, blend that out really quickly. Okay, I'm taking the foundation and I'm going to put it on the areas where I did not put concealer and then just kind of lightly blend everything together. Okay, so I don't know that I like this brush with this foundation. The foundation is so thick that like it doesn't want to spread with this. Hold on, let me switch over to my sponge, see if I can really get this pressed in. That was one of the things actually that I noticed yesterday that I was kind of thinking about too, is maybe if I could work with this foundation and like getting it to press into the skin, maybe that would be the ticket because I didn't really love it, love it. Um, Like the, the thickness of it that I get with a brush, I don't love, but I'm also not surprised because the formula itself is so thick. So I think this is gonna be kind of a balancing act with what works well on your skin like with your texture if you have any like I do. Now for coverage, I'm gonna stop here. I don't wanna press my luck because it's actually looking um, pretty nicely like settled into the skin right now. I don't wanna chunk up a bunch of um, a bunch of texture on my skin, but I do just wanna note right through here as far as coverage goes, I'm getting like a standard medium. My redness is still peeking through, but the lighter redness is covered. Um, and I think that with this foundation, that's definitely the best place to leave it again just because it is such a thick formula. Now under the eyes and through the T-zone, just like before, I am still taking the one size setting powder, making sure 
that everything is nice and smooth and set down. And then just really quick over the rest of the face, instead of using a foundation powder, I'm gonna use the number seven Lift and Luminate Finishing Powder in the shade Light, and just lightly press that in all over with a fluffy brush here. This is a BH number one fluffy brush. And I'm doing this just because, like I said before, I think the overall mattification of this foundation is pretty intense, and I want something that's gonna give me more of a lilt to the skin and not add much of, of that mattified factor to it. All right, so now just because this video has already been super long, I'm gonna go ahead, run off of camera, and finish up the rest of my face, but I just wanted to give you guys a shot of how things are looking. I definitely think the lighter application is working really well for this foundation. I will say at this point, the only thing I'm not loving is that um, I can't really use a foundation powder with this because, again, of that matte factor, and I normally would use something like that on, like, a, on a day where today, like, I'm having more of an acne, more like a red and flame type situation, just for that little bit of extra coverage and canceling over this area. Um, but other than that, I think things are looking good. Like I, I actually prefer this to the way that it looked yesterday in terms of the smoothness and the um, like overall look on the skin. It just looks a lot more natural and not nearly as matte. But I'm going to go ahead, like I said, run off of camera, finish up the face, super basic makeup today, nothing crazy. And uh, I'll be right back and we will do a close up and see how things are looking here in a second. All right, you guys. So I am back. Obviously I have on the rest of my makeup and I think with this foundation, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a thought process on where I'm at because going through this, you know, again and trying different products, it really, I think, kind of fine-tuned my issue with this because I think the foundation, like, yes, can I get a decent look out of it? Sure. Like, I think it looks nice so far, but I'm noticing up close the areas that are starting to become an issue already, like just in the last, you know, hour that I've been putting it on or half hour, however long it's been, um, I'm noticing that this foundation is having an issue with my skin in the more textured areas. And that's like right through here on both sides of my cheeks where I have regular acne and then even along my jawline where I had more cystic acne and scarring, those areas for me are just really, really difficult. And so I think what I'm having with this foundation, and if you picked it up or if you're struggling with it, I think it might be an issue with texture. If you have texture on your skin or areas that are just um, a little bit more terrained <laughs> than other areas, just say that because I really feel like it is a texture issue. I don't think the formula of the foundation necessarily is bad, but because it is so heavily weighted, like it's a thicker texture by itself and it has that dry down feature where it really does cling to your skin, I think all of those things kind of become more amplified over my more textured areas, if that makes sense. Either way, I just wanted to pop on here and give you guys um, kind of where I'm at so far. And obviously I am gonna wear it. I'll check in later and we'll kind of talk about where things are going. But I think that that's it for everything. I'm gonna go ahead and run off of camera, obviously go do the day. And I will step back on here in a little bit. And all right, you guys, with that, it is officially the end of the day. I wasn't sure if this was gonna be on my cell phone, in the office or here, uh, but I'm actually really glad that I'm able to do this one on camera in front of the lights because I've been wearing it. I did about another 10-ish, maybe 10 and a half-ish hour wear test on it, and I'm, I'm really happy to be able to show you guys this kind of texture up close because I think going into, and I'm gonna go ahead actually and throw up the up close so you guys can see it while I talk, but I think a lot of the things that I changed this morning, talking about the primer, you know, the prep, as well as the application and the powder afterwards, all three of those things really did make a difference on my skin as far as not only how it pressed in, like over my cheeks, that lay not serum made a huge difference. Having something that was more hydrated and really thinning out the amount of the foundation I used just looks so much better. It has much more of a natural um, leaning texture by the end of the day, which I am obsessed with. I think it actually looks really, really nice in that area. And the same goes for the powder. I think that going in with a lighter texture, something that, again, doesn't lean matte, it doesn't lean thick or cakey at all, I think that really that just kind of enhanced what the primer was doing, giving me more of that natural skin-like kind of finish. Now, all of this being said, I want to make sure that I round out this video with kind of my conclusionary thoughts because I feel like there's just been a lot of, you know, this and that and this and that. And this, this video has been kind of all over the place. So I want to give you guys kind of my breakdown, my thoughts, opinions for me personally and how it wore. So I'm going to start with the basics on this one. Is it my favorite foundation? No. I think that um, I, I appreciate the fact that she wanted to reformulate and work on something and try to make it better. And because of her making those changes, I do think that it's going to, you know, aid a lot of people. And there will be people that really enjoy anything. I would actually say that for me personally, this foundation took a lot more work and kind of, you know, figuring to get it to this stage. And for all of this work, I could have just as easily used her stick foundation. This is the Faux Filter Stick Foundation. And I really, really enjoy this. It's a great, easy application. I use it on a day where I want that natural, satin, skin-like feel, super fast. And I think the biggest bummer for me was that when I use these ones, which I keep referencing, you know, as kind of a guidepost for this one, but at least when I had to go in and be a little bit more finicky with application 
position or with how I set or stuff like that with these. I, yes, I had to be a little bit more careful going into it, but I was still able to maintain the properties that make them so great, whether it's the coverage, the soft matte feel, the long lasting, um, you know, all the things about them that I love, I was still able to keep that. So it was worth it for me to maybe be a little bit more careful or have to apply it a certain way because again, in the end, I'm still getting what makes them so great. And with this one, that wasn't the case because I had to sacrifice, you know, not only the application end of it and being super finicky and really watching the application and really working it into the skin. Uh, but then at the same time too, I lost the benefits of it. Other than that, you guys, I don't have anything else to say. I know that this was super long and I apologize for it kind of being all over the place, but I do hope it was helpful. And of course, I want to hear from you guys down below. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions, whether it is on the foundation, if you want me to test something else, or if you've tried this foundation and you want to give me all of your thoughts on it, whether you love it, you hate it, you want to compare it to the original, um, anything like that, please leave those thoughts as well because I would love to hear from you guys. Oh, and also just a random side note here, probably should have put this about 10 minutes ago, but if you notice that right in this region, I have no foundation in the close-up, <laughs> oops, um, somebody, not going to name any names, Paige, may have had French toast for dinner and with my French toast had syrup and that syrup did drip all the way down my little chinny chin chin and it caused me to wipe it away and alas, there is no more foundation. So just want to put that out there. But anyways, all of that being said, I don't have anything else. Again, you can follow me on Instagram. I would really, really appreciate that. Everything will be linked down below. Subscribe, turn on your post notifications, all the good things. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you liked the video and please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Who is my forbidden grocery daddy? The scrub mommy. <laughs> I'm gonna scrub my mommy. I'm gonna scrub my mommy. <laughs> Your forbidden grocery daddy. Oh, you're smiling. I have you gotta scrub you. daddy. Maybe your scrub daddy and my scrub mommy can get together. <laughs> <laughs>